King Island, Queenstown, Woodsdale and the Tamar Valley. Four unique rural communities with one thing in common, a love of Australian football. It's a world of pleasure and pain, of hope and redemption, sometimes brutal, occasionally amazing, always passionate. In Tasmania, football is alive and kicking. Football team. King Island is located at the western end of Bass Strait, directly in the teeth of the winds known as the Roaring Forties. Yeah, today it can be fine and no wind. Tomorrow it can be blowing 50 knot westerly and hail and rain. And it's pretty open, the island's a pretty flat place, so you can imagine how rough it can get here, but we never call the footy off. Now uh, you can get wet and cold, but the boys still slog through it. This small island once supported five football teams, but these days there are only three. Originally, Grasship was a Sheelot mine, so they were the miners. Carrie were the, the bank tellers and the school teachers, and the towns people, the, the collar and tie people. And North, well, they were traditionally the, the dairy farmers, farming people at the north end of the island. And uh, that's what it was for you know, quite some time until uh, things changed. The island's three-team competition is unique. Its strength lies in the intense, almost tribal rivalry between the teams. The grassy hawks from the once thriving mining town in the south, the curry robins from the fishing port and commercial centre on the west coast, and the north bulldogs from the rich dairy farming country at the top of the island. Each team is very loyal to their club and that is a strength. If it went any other way, I don't think football would survive. I turned the football over one day and this little lady was standing there and with this umbrella as big as she was. And uh, this big guy got into this grassy chap and I called him a few little names and she said, how dare you speak like that? She said, that's my son. And the umbrella was flying around. I said, he's off, he's off. You know, in a way it's good because it shows their loyalty to their club, but sometimes some of the things they say I find very derogatory and it's a bit uncalled for. Well, there's a lot of blokes work together. Like, they're playing opposite sides and uh, best of mates. Like, so it, it's actually pretty hilarious and funny watching two good mates out in a football field because when they're on the footy field, they're not mates. In the winter, football's the thing. It's the biggest spectator sport here. When you've got a population of 1,700 and you get an attendance of 1,000 at the grand final, it shows what the people feel about it. Jeff French has been King Island's football reporter for the last 30 years. He's also an avid pigeon fancier. He reckons that's where he got his interest in the media. In the early days, before planes and sea transport was pretty chancy. Pigeons were sent here from some bloke in Werribee. News events that were worth reporting from King Island, they were flown out by pigeon to Werribee. It's an unusually calm day as Jeff and Kath head to the Oval for the first game of the season. It's going to be last year's Premier's Grassy versus Curry. Well, I'll go out the sheds and pick up the team sheets for Geoffrey and come back. Jeff and Kath parked the mobile press box in the usual spot to report the game. As they watch the juniors play, Jeff gets ready for the big game. I'm very passionate about the game here, and so is Kath. Kath keeps tab of the goal kickers through the match because it's, it's pretty hard. He says, who kicked that goal? I said, oh, God, I can't. So I have to get out and then I'll be asking somebody along a bit further. Get out and ask the goalkeeper. And then I do indescribable shorthand in the car. No one else can read it and pinch me story, I can assure you that. 
We'll just start by, there's a few blokes that haven't played with us before. Grassy coach at Ricky all. Mundy addresses his players. Now that cocky, them in North at the moment, we're gone, we're gone, Grassy's gone, and I can't for the life of me work that out. We've won two premierships in a row and we haven't been beaten, but we're gone. That's all the talk around King Island. Well, that's how they think, good on them. For the last two years, Grassy have been the pace setters on the island, but this year the word is that both Curry and North are looking strong. Uh, Grassy's not the side they were in the last two years, with the loss of a few star players, but you've got to give Curry credit, they've took it right up to me. Come home, then sit down and rewrite everything. Three quarter time scores, Grassy 13 14, Curry 6 15. The Robins had run their race, no doubt about it, as Jason Denby gold. Richard Cole continued to turn back everything the Curry forwards could serve up. First thing Monday, Jeff and Kath deliver the story to Kathleen Hunter, the owner and editor of the King Island Courier. He's uh, been writing for the paper for 30 odd years. He loves his football. He's got a fantastic dry wit. I think he's only ever sick when it's not football season. He does it so dutifully, you know, every week, week in, week out. Jeff is strictly a long hand man, so Kathleen gets the job of retyping his report. Kathleen and her family came to King Island a few years ago after a worldwide search for a safe and secure lifestyle. We looked at Zimbabwe, we looked at Madagascar, we looked at New Zealand, and then we heard about King Island. We heard about the calendar that's put out every year that has everybody's birthday on it. And so passing people in the street, you can say, happy birthday, Megs, and it's, it's just fabulous. King Island also has its own television coverage of the football. Farmer, timber miller and filmmaker Jan Van Riswick covers each game from the top of the club rooms at Curry Oval. I'd got permission to get a box made up that I could put up on top of the uh, sheds because I used to just get up on top of the shed without a box and I suffered with weather a few times. One year we borrowed a camera and we did our own local version of Superkick. And that was where I first started to doctor footage. And that was where we end up having the, a girl end up winning it and she ended up kicking the ball from Curry. And we had shots of supporters, you know, that, that lived along the way, you know, sitting there watching the ball go over. <laughs> and then we had the ball bouncing in grass. That's how it got started. And as I did more and more, I wanted to do a better and better job. And it wasn't until I eventually bought my own camera that I really started to get into it a lot more. I'm actually Dutch by birth. I was um, nine months old when mum and dad immigrated out to Australia. And dad just worked on different farms in Victoria for a little while and he had a distant relative on King Island and he came over and had a look. It was cheaper to buy a farm here than what it was over there. And he bought a place and uh, we moved to King Island on February the 2nd, 1970. And you come here into a community like this and we were only just here a week and the next door neighbour came across and wanted to know if I played footy and I said, oh, no, I don't, haven't really played, but I said, I wouldn't mind. And he said, all right, yeah, come and play, play with us. And that was Mount Stanley. And then in 72, Mount Stanley folded and Mount Stanley and Grassy combined. So that's how I've come to be with Grassy and been with Grassy ever since. Grassy coach Ricky Mundy learned to play football on King Island before he was lured away to the bigger leagues. It's no coincidence that Grassy's success has coincided with his return. Yeah, I grew up here as a kid, done all my primary school at Grassy, high school in Curry. Played with the Grassy Juniors. Got recruited to Tasmania, play with East Devonport. I was actually the second youngest at the time to play with that club. I think I played 100 games and I was only about 19 years of age. So and then sort of like young blokes do, I was still a kid. Wanted to see a bit of Australia and went to Queensland and stayed up there for about eight or ten years playing uh, country football up there. And then I shifted back to King Island in about 1998. All three clubs train and play at the Curry Oval. Some nights when we don't get enough here, we, we train together. <laughs> so, yeah, and that, that day has happened a fair few times. 
like some nights we'll only get seven or eight and they'll only have six or seven so we just train together. Yes and that's what worried me this year when they shoved players from another side into curry, they were short. The curry side's got quite a few fishermen in it, they couldn't get in. But that is a drop kick away from what happens on Flinders Island. Flinders Island is at the eastern end of Bass Strait. Its population has dropped to less than a thousand and over the years the local football association has dwindled to only two teams, red and purple. They still love their footy, but these days it's pretty much a social event. I don't want to see King Island go to social football because we haven't got a car big enough to, to go on by to wave his flag like that out of the car windows. Tonight, the three teams are training together for a different reason. The King Islanders are playing against a team from Circular Head in northwestern Tasmania. You'll probably be a ruckman by the look of it, all right? Yeah. And Stacey, you, you'll be probably a ruck rover with Farmer, this yep. is what I'm thinking. Yep. I think it's a great idea because they haven't done it for a lot of years. They used to have it regularly every year. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's good for the island because it's good for the younger guys. You know, they, they play, um, they can play for, for something other than just playing in this, in this comp, three teams. He's not coming. Picking the combined team is a job for all three coaches. They have to put aside their animosities, but when North coach Bear Alexander arrives, you could cut the air with a knife. I told him I didn't want to come down here. Uh, this won't take long. This, this is just the, the wood. Right. You know, and, and, you you and you ruck with the same. He told me tonight he's, he'd be rock player. That's all I'm, yeah, right. I can only tell you what he told me. Yeah. And that was <laughs> half hour before I come down here. Yeah, so we've, we've got bugged there on that before. Let's sort it. If we, we're happy with that, let's move to our well, world. Well, so it's all about this. We've yeah, I'm happy with that, yes. Behind the scenes, things aren't going smoothly either. Circular Head are having trouble raising the money needed to charter planes to get to the island. For Kath Hunter, this is too important for the island to let it slip. Kath just got involved by myself or Frenchie saying that the game's not, you know, it looks like the game's been caught off and it, it just stirred her up and said, well, no, this is not good enough. We're going, we're going to do whatever we can to get the game. I decided with, uh, after talking to some of the other councillors that we should step in and uh, at least uh, try and meet at least half the costs. And then uh, Kath was uh, energetic enough to get uh, the community uh, behind uh, coming up with the rest of the funds, so it's, it's on. On Saturday morning, the circular head team arrives in a convoy of Cessnas. Can the King Island players put aside their differences for one Saturday afternoon? There was as many people at the ground as what there would have been for a grand final. It was the first time I, I would have seen a lot of people barracking for people that they've never barracked for in their life, I suppose. And it probably gave those people a chance to um, be on their side for once. What a tackle! Great tackle! Great tackle! My heart says King all of them, but my brain says otherwise. <laughs> they've got about, what i seen, they've got about nine, six footers. It's looking bad. The last five minutes of that, gut, that corner, we lost concentration. We got lost. Come on, Rock up, get the shepherds oh, back. Get going. Let's get going. Oh, come on. Oh, The 
There's just a quarter to play and the King Islanders are in front. The big question is, will they be able to stay there against such strong opposition? Someone come back! Three, get, Reedy, get someone to come back on four! I didn't think King Island was going to go as well as they did because the circular head side had been training for three months. I'd also like to thank Kath Hunter for all the work which she has put in to get this game to happen. Circular Head went straight into attack and scored a single at the Netherby Road end. King Island went forward and the reliable Barrett split the uprights. It wasn't long before he repeated the dose. The Curry veteran showed he has no spent force. With King Island's big win behind them, the players returned to their teams to fight it out for a place in the grand final. And Jeff French will be watching closely as he casts the votes for the Golden Pen Award. That's all it is, just quick, sharp handle. Let's run this game out because we've got one more quarter. As the season draws to a close, Jeff and Kath head into town to pick up the Golden Pen Trophy. Trophy time, is it? Yes. Trophy time. Yes. Yeah, that time of the year again. How'd you go with the inscription on it? It's got on there all right nicely for you. Yes, I'm not sure his name's spelt right, Dad. All right. No. It's a trophy that the players like winning. It's always valued over $100. He won't but that's, that's beside the point. We just think it's a small service to put for. Despite the high hopes of the grassy and north coaches, the golden pen goes to Darren Williams, a youngster from Curry. This year it's going to be a grassy versus north grand final, but things haven't gone too well for Ricky's team. A run of injuries has meant they've had to promote a couple of juniors for the big game. Last two games we played our last roster match. We lost our Ruckman with a knee injury, we lost our Rover with a broken arm, and then on Saturday in the first final we lost um, four players. We're the underdog, so yeah, they got pressure, they got more pressure on them than us, I reckon. So. They haven't been beaten all year, so... But funny things happen in football. Grand final morning. Jeff and Kath have staked out their vantage point early. The season to date has been very dominated by North, and they're well backed up by the rest of the players around the ground. Where Grassy have had a horror year with injury, sickness, and they've battled on. Hi, right, boys, start thinking about this. This is our day, our day, your day, all right? If there's any shit start out there and they pick on any of our little blokes, I want some of you bigger blokes to fix it up. And I mean, fix it up. Tackle like there's no tomorrow. I did have in there tackle to hurt. But people got upset because they thought we were going out hunting. Well, I like hunting. I really do. If someone hammers one of our blokes for no reason, I want to see someone put on the deck for it. And I don't give a f if you get reformed or not. And Mark, I spoke to you about your job. Don't let the team down. You're wearing that jumper today because you whinged that you didn't have it. You got it? Show us you want to wear it, all right? That's it, Mark. You've got right. to have pride in this and want to win. And in any sport, if you think that way up here and in here, 
You will never get beat in anything. Come on! Pull off! Pull off! Right, lovely. Let's go! Let's go! It's packed with cars in the ground and the streets around the ground are all packed. It's hard to believe that a small competition can be so vital and of so much importance to the people, and it is. Kicks it into centre-half forward with the marks taken by Hamer again. The first quarter is tight and Grassy mounts a real challenge. For the first time all year, North looks vulnerable. Mark Ennis, North's big full forward, has been slow to respond to Bear's instructions and he pays the price. I do not, and I mean this, want to see shit like that again. First options, or you'll go in that option. You make the call, mate. If you kick a couple on them against the breeze, they'll be start arguing, well, we OK? And that's what you want them to do. Let's go out this quarter, I said to the start, we win quarter into the wind, you'll win a game of football. We've lost it. The wind's playing a hell of a big part in the game because it's carrying the ball all over the place. A lot of shots you'd think would be easy, they, they swung right away and on out on the full on, on occasions. Ricky has been holding the juniors back, but he decides it's now or never. North's class begins to show as they pile on the goals with the wind at their back. Grassy had a good first quarter, they led. The second quarter was where Grassy blew it. They've got a couple of kids playing, they've got players out there that shouldn't be out there with Come broken bones. That... That's better. It hasn't been high-class football that we had last week, but they've tried and they've persisted and they haven't given in. And I was actually proud of you, so that was really good. Good effort. And don't be that disappointed. If we got absolutely flogged, I would have been upset. But I wasn't like that inside, so I was proud of them that they had a dip, and that's all you can ask. Norfolk got a good team. They did all year. I think they had a few lean years and they had something to prove, and that can happen in a three-team comp. We've been carrying a wooden spoon for two years. We pride ourselves to be the top team and a top club. We carried that wooden spoon for two years. We knew we'd come back, and now we are forced. And this is ours, boys. Grand final day. That's a day that stands out in the annals of King Island sport. Congratulations, North, on a season well played. No one knows how good you are because you were never pressured. As the roller door that divides the club rooms is raised, players, officials and supporters from both sides come face to face. There's cut-off points winning grand finals. How much you can push people's buttons, and they pushed mine that night. And they went overboard a bit and sang a premiership song in where we were all drinking. So you can imagine it was nearly on. Yeah. But I, I went up and grabbed the, phone, the microphone and smashed it so, so they couldn't sing it anymore. Grassy, grassy, north, north, curry, scurry. And uh, that keeps the place alive. Next week, the Tamar Cats are resurrected as a family club, but not without a few casualties along the way. A couple of sponsors come to us and weren't too impressed with the behaviour of some of our senior players. Any more fighting or swearing, you're out of the club. Football team.